Good morning and welcome to the Bowling University studio from the International Bowling Campus in Arlington, Texas. I'm John Karabatsis and I'll be your host for this edition of the Bowling University Tuesday Morning Profit Break. Thank you for joining us. The Tuesday Morning Profit Break is an opportunity for sharing insights on how to grow revenue, reduce cost, and enrich yourself, your team, and your business. Welcome to our new viewers and welcome back to those of you joining us again. Thank you for taking a few minutes out of your busy day. Grab your coffee or your favorite morning beverage and let's get started improving your profitability. Today, we have with us one of our very own team members from here at the campus, Mr. Bart Berger. Bart is no stranger to the Tuesday Morning Profit Break or our industry and is going to spend a few minutes this morning talking about generating revenue through outside sales for non salespeople. Bart, good morning. Hey, good morning, John. Thanks for having me. Great to be on this side of the desk. Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. I want to take just a few minutes today and share with you a little bit about, uh, with all the things we've got going on in, in the bowling centers today, how to uh, generate sales and marketing really when you're not a salesperson, okay? So just to kind of set this up and give a little bit of an overview before we jump into this, uh, know this, our industry is very unique. There's a couple of unique points about our industry. One is we have no franchise model. We are uh, very unique in that respect that uh, we're one of the few business channels that has no franchise model. And why that matters is that for every bit of sales, a portion of that in a franchise goes to national advertising. And then also we don't have a large corporate structure. Less than 10% of the total industry is owned by any one corporation, and uh, so we're salt of the earth, small business owners like many of you join us today. So why that matters, again, if we're going to generate sales, we've got to leave the four walls and go out and, and, and make stuff happen there and knock on, on doors there. I used the analogy, and I know may, it may be a little bit early for it, but uh, we talk about leaving the cave, killing something, dragging it back to eat, and that's really, if we're going to survive, we've got to get out, get that business, and, and bring it back in. So with that in mind, let's jump in and cover a few things today. So first of all, where has all the selling gone? Um, as we talk to hundreds of folks over the years like you that join us either on campus or online or, or here at the Profit Break, if we ask you the question, what is your biggest challenge in promoting sales outside the center, given the fact of where we are today in this kind of post-pandemic, wrapping up the end of this uh, world, here's what the study shows. Lack of time. We're all busier than ever before. Uh, lack of resources on uh, do I have the tools necessary to go out and be able to do that? And then lack of knowledge. Do I have the knowledge to go out and uh, generate sales outside of the four walls of, of the center there? Now, uh, just one thing I would share with you, that uh, the results of these surveys, the data, it was the same pre-pandemic as it is today. So the dynamics of this have, have not changed. We've always been pressed for time, we've always been pressed for resources, and we've often uh, considered ourselves not having that, that, lack, that lack of knowledge there in being able to do that. So just know that, that the world hasn't changed that much in, in that respect there. So one other data point to share with you just so you can kind of see how your business, your center compares. This is off of the 2019 uh, benchmark study. Only 30% of centers in America have a dedicated salesperson, somebody that's responsible for going out and building business. And as you can see by this chart that we're showing, uh, that it absolutely would fall in line with the larger the center, the higher the volume, the larger the staff, the more apt you are to have that, that individual salesperson. We totally get that. And my point for uh, sharing this with you is you're not alone, right? Seven out of 10 bowling centers in America today do not have a dedicated person to this in which we know that we need to uh, carve out some time and some resources and hey let's be honest most of us are not natural salespeople. Nothing good or bad about that, just kind of a statement of fact. And I throw myself in that, that bucket. I am not a good salesperson. If, I, if my family depended on me leaving the cave, killing something, dragging it back to eat and survive in the form of sales, we would starve. Now, I'm fairly good at marketing, uh, but I'm not a good at sales. Uh, salespeople are just wired differently. And I think most of us fall into that space that we enjoy what we do, we're good talking with people, but the sales thing is, is a little unique for us. So let's jump in and share a few tactics with with you. So the question is for all of us today, in any business, especially in our business, let's imagine that uh, tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning, you've got nothing else to do, the world was perfect, your staff was there, you didn't have any uh, uh, customer issues, guest issues, and you, everything was perfect, what would you do? And you had some time to carve out and go sell, what would you sell? That's the product. When would you sell it? That's the time. 
And then the one that most of us struggle with is who would you sell it to the prospect? So we need to understand the product and it goes way beyond just bowling. You have many product segments and the time and the prospect. So we're gonna jump quickly into these first two. I'm gonna give you some more resources and then I wanna share with you the prospect piece because that's kind of candidly where most of us struggle. So this whole uh, when, you know, when would we, we sell that to? Just know this, um, and some of you are very, very familiar with this. We've got an awesome uh, course at the uh, university here online. We also have a great profit break episode designed on day part management, identifying those day parts of when I would sell um, and, and understanding that not all time slots are created equally there. Most of you already know this, you have this. If not, you've got some resources to go, go back to there. The goal setting, we certainly are fans of, of goal setting here at the, at the campus. And we teach to the SMART acronym of goal setting. And again, I would reference you to one of our previous profit breaks that we specifically talk about SMART goal setting. We've got a great online course about SMART goal setting. But just know that before we can get into this uh, other piece here, we, we've got to identify those two issues there. We've got to have the, the win. You're going to answer the win through that, that day part uh, management. And then you've, uh, we've got to get into that who. And this is candidly where we struggle. And that's where really what I want to spend some time this morning on with you is who do we talk to? Understanding that if we're not natural salespeople, I may not even know uh, who to talk to. And I may not really be comfortable picking up the phone and talking to a stranger. Or I may not be comfortable uh, going out and visiting uh, someone that I don't know. So that who thing takes on a, a different dynamic there. When we boil it down, we really have two types of leads, those uh, internal leads and external leads. Of course, external leads are, leads are anyone outside that center that I think I want to uh, communicate with and invite into my facility, and then those internal leads, which are there waiting for you, and the ones that we spend the most time teaching to here at the university, because that's the low-hanging fruit. Those are the folks that are already in your facility that you can connect with, and quite candidly, you probably already have some type of a, a awareness or maybe even a relationship with. So my big takeaway that I want to leave with you today is this item called a team registration form. And this is what you use for your league bowlers. Now, for many of you watching, this is going to be nothing new. You've seen this before. But this one is a little unique. It has a couple of points that I want to, on a capture for you and share with you uh, specifically to that, that lead generation. The first one there is, if you take a peek there on the screen there, you'll see that uh, there's a little box there for check here if you are a first year league bowler. Now it's not really part of the sales I'm sharing with you today, but it's imperative that you know who your first year league bowlers are because they are more at risk than any other guest. Just know that. First year league bowlers drop out at a much higher rate than your existing league bowlers. A lot of reasons for that outside the scope of today, but you've got to be capturing who those first year league guests are, and this gives you a chance to do do that. Secondly, this is also a legal opt-in if you would like to have uh, be able to communicate with them via email. I hope that you're building a database. I hope that you are uh, some type of a CRM that you're communicating with those lead guests. This form captures that. I can identify those first-year guests. I can identify those folks that have given me permission to communicate with them via email. But the real nugget, what I want to share with you here today, is that employer, that place of employment. Now, I know what you're saying. Some of you may say, Bart, I know my bowlers. I know where they work. I get that. I believe you know where many of them work, but you can't know where all of them work. And so by having them share with you where, they, where they're employed at, those are potential leads. And whatever your number is, if you're a smaller center that has a couple hundred league bowlers, or if you're a larger center that has a couple thousand league bowlers, imagine if 80% of those folks actually shared with you uh, where they worked, what an incredible opportunity that would be to generate some sales business. Now that you determine what the product is. It could be for a league or a club. It could be for a team building. It could be for a birthday. It could be for a corporate. Whatever that is, you need leads to talk to. And imagine if I went down on a Tuesday night and John bowled in my Tuesday night men's league and I said, you know, John happened to work at a large corporation that I wanted to get uh, engaged with and try to prospect with. Imagine going down and thanking John for being a great league bowler and asking him who I could talk to in his organization about uh, an employee outing. It, it, is, it is networking, it's speed to market, and it's an incredible way. And I promise you, if you'll embrace this uh, league team uh, registration concept, 
uh, you'll have more leads in center without ever leaving than you could really, really use there. And then, John, kind of the final thing I want to share today with the folks that are tuning in there is just quickly, this is a great exercise we do at the campus. Of course, we can't do this exercise virtually. We would break, break everybody from the teams of four to six. Doesn't matter if they have four teams or 14 teams. And we'd say, here are the five things that go into any buying decision. It's just the psychological of a buyer. Really doesn't matter what the product is. And that's the price, the product, the time to buy, the salesperson, the company. And we break them into groups and we ask them to rank these in order of importance. And I promise you, if we have 14 teams, there'll be 14 different sets of answers. Maybe some similarities, but uh, different answers in there. And here's what I want to share with all of the viewers here today. Number one, salesperson. People buy from people, and this is external data. This is not about bowling, this is not our survey. This is people buy from people. In fact, our, our dear friend, Beth Stanley from Train Entertainment has a great book, People Buy From People, and salesperson is number one. Company is number two, product is number three, price is number four, and time to buy is number five. And know this, if you lead with price, and, and price is number one, then you are nothing more than a commodity, and that's not what we want to be. We, we're in the experience business. So, so folks, people buy from people. Uh, use those uh, internal leads to help you uh, grow your business. John? Bart, that's really great tips, especially, I, I love the part too, you're talking about us being in the experience business, which is what we're all about. And for those of us that aren't wired as salespeople, it's, it's, it's extra timely. A couple of questions, or at least we have time for one. Right now, we're hearing from a lot of centers that they're very busy, they're recording record sales. Is this topic really, does it matter right now? Yeah, you know, that's a, John, that's a fair question. And some of you, if you're blessed to be one of those folks that are experiencing great revenues, that's great. And, and I applaud you. And I know that now may not be the time that you'll start connecting with those people, but now's the time to start building leads. So when you need it, and you will need it, our business is full of ebbs and flows. Uh, business is good, it will sometimes slow down, and it will get good again. So I would encourage those folks, John, if business is good, uh, still capture that information, start planning, so when you do have that dip in sales, you're not scurrying and wondering what to do. And then some of us, um, candidly, we haven't bounced back quite as quickly, and we need that business. So you can go do this today. You can get started today. So I think it's critical, whether you're planning for the future or planning to execute now, start building those leads and getting ready for, for when you need it. Okay. Thank you for that. What, what time for one more quick one. I've heard you say in the past, hope is not a strategy. What do you mean by that? <laughs> hope is not a strategy. And actually, John Maxwell is credited with that statement that uh, hope is a wonderful thing to have. And we all have hope that, that you know, we're going to get through this and get through this quickly. But from a business perspective, it is a terrible strategy. And we want to plan and not just hope that things will get better and hope that customers will come back or hope that we can, we can do these things. Uh, hope is a, t is a wonderful attribute to have. Mm -hmm. It's a terrible business strategy, plan, build those leads, get ready to uh, you know, leave the cave, kill something, drag it back, and let's build business. Good point. Bart, thank you for that. Some great insights, some great tips. So we'll end it on that note. So again, thank you, Bart, for some great information. I'd like to remind all of you that if you'd like more information or have team members that would benefit from understanding this topic, we have a great 30-minute course as part of our on-demand online training program at bowlinguniversity.net. As we wrap up another edition of the Tuesday Morning Profit Break, remember that when your focus is on growing people, people will grow your business. We look forward to seeing you next week at 1015 Eastern for another great episode of the Tuesday Morning Profit Break. If you have any questions about today's show or would like additional information, you can reach us anytime at education at bpaa.com. Also, you and your team can watch any of our previous episodes 24-7 by visiting bowlinguniversity.net. Until then, I'm John Karabatsis, and do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. We'll see you next week.